10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... This past weekend at the Strip of Las Vegas Motor Speedway, a champion was crowned in one of our four professional categories. As for the rest, Las Vegas set the stage for an epic and dramatic finish in just two weeks in Southern California at Pomona. In pro stock, number one qualifier Erica Enders put together one of the greatest weekends of her career, clinching her fifth pro stock world championship in the semifinals of Las Vegas, tying her with Jake Coughlin and Greg Anderson for third most in the class. However, Erica was not done there, as she would go on to win the race, defeating Troy Coughlin Jr. in the final round to secure a 10th win of the season and 43rd of her career in pro stock. In top fuel, after four consecutive second round losses in the countdown, Brittany Forrest would step up and take advantage of points leader Justin Ashley's first round loss in Vegas. As Forrest would go on to win the race, nabbing her fifth win of the year and 16th of her career, and taking over the points lead by just seven points, heading into the season finale at Pomona. In their pro stock motorcycle, part-timer Hector Rana Jr. would go back to back on the season, scoring win number 17 of his career and stopping points leader Matt Smith in the final round, as Matt now holds an 104 point lead over his closest pursuer Joey Gladstone, going into the season's final race. And finally, in Nitro Funny Car, Matt Hagen kept his championship hopes alive when he defeated points leader Robert Height in the final round to claim his fourth win of the season and 43rd of his career, as he closes the gap to just 63 points behind Height in third, which is one race left to go, as Cap sits 61 points behind in second. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a special fast-paced recap of the penultimate race of the 2022 NHRA Camping World Drag Racing Series season, the 2022 NHRA Nevada Nationals from the Strip of Las Vegas Motor Speedway, brought to you by Competition Plus. Drag racing fan, this is Competition Plus Power Hour, and we are live. I'm your host, Lee Craft, the Monday Morning Racer. My co-host, Slam and Sam, is somewhere in Jamaica, man, at a wedding doing the MC job. So co-hosting along with me tonight is Assistant Senior Editor for CompetitionPlus.com. That's Darren Williams, Jr. Darren, good to have you on. Look, I know you were at Las Vegas. What a great job you did on the recap. We just aired here at the beginning of the show. But huge news dropped at SEMA today for the world of drag racing, and in particular in Southern California. And you're a so cowboy. What do you yes, think sir. of the big news? Ah, man, In-N-Out Burger taking over the name rights for auto, for now Pomona Drag Trip. In-N-Out Burger, Pomona Drag Trip. Now it's called the In-N-Out NHR World Finals. I mean, how cool is that? In-N-Out Burger just screams Southern California. We think of Southern California, you think of In-N-Out Burger, you know? And so, and also, this is, this is kind of like refreshing something new for Pomona you know they've kind of need that for a little while and yeah. shout out to Auto Club for everything Auto Club has done for Pomona you know they took over the naming rights of the Auto Club World Finals I believe in 1999 so they've been on as a naming rights for such a long time I became Auto Club Raceway at Pomona I be, believe like 07 08 or something like that so shout out to Auto Club for everything they've done but this just feels new fresh you know for Pomona I love it and uh yeah like I said it just streams the SoCal and I can't wait to 2023 and hopefully they sell some in and out at the racetrack yes again I want to echo with you that thank you to Auto Club, not just for the track there at the Fairplex, but the big NASCAR track, the little tracks, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the little drag strips. They have been important to the motorsport scene overall in yes. Southern California and California. So thank you, Auto Club, for that. But, you know, I'm sure this is a situation of just a contract came up and a new yeah. partner is created and... In and out certainly fits so well with Pomona and the finals and whatever else they may very well do with mm -hmm. NHRA, with its history being a Southern California company. And you think of top burgers, in and out is definitely there. And when you think of the top in drag racing, it is the NHRA. So they fit well together. And not only just the naming rights, not only just sponsoring the final event, but well, everything needs to be put to rest about Pomona being lost yes. to yes. us as drag racers and drag racing fans and media types. No matter what uh, pseudo reporting site may put it out there, I'll name that site on my show on Thursday. I've done it before. I'll do it again, and it needs to be repeated. But as reports came out earlier this year, it's false that we're losing Pomona. We get it announced today that there's going to be drag racing there 
to at least 2033. It's in I think things are doing pretty good for NHRA, and they're certainly not D Y I N G. Oh, no, for sure. Ten more years of racing at historic Pomona Raceway. I mean, so cool. And, you know, for in and out too, I hope this I hope this leads to maybe, and we talked about this earlier, you know, through text. Hopefully this means, you know, they sponsor a Bobby Bodie, at least for a race, or, you know, a, a Crystal Ball win when it comes to the West Coast. I think that would be pretty cool, too, to see in and out Burger back on the side of a race car. Do you th don't you think so? I would love to see it. And them coming in and doing something that, far as I understand, they've never done in the sport of drag racing. We've seen them on cars, but we've never seen them take yeah. title sponsor roles and naming mm -hmm. rights. I've never, I don't think they've done that. I'm not sure they've done that anywhere else in fact yeah. if you're in the comment section and you happen to know of like the in and out arena or the in and out whatever and taking naming rights hey let us know but i have ne not seen them do this in their marketing when you take that level oftentimes you do find partners below that level so yeah. we could see cars roll into pomona and maybe not have full sponsorship but they might yeah. have partial sponsorship with in and out on the car. I know big fans of in and out are Krista Baldwin would love to see in and out on her top field dragster and uh, Bobby Bodie, uh, Mr. California cool himself. It seems like <laughs> the way he portrays uh, himself swag, huh? out there. We got got swag. Some swag. Got some swag. It'd be cool to see in and out on that uh, family machine for the Bodies. So real quick, there's a lot of potential for the in and out. It'd be cool for them to find an old guy too. But, you know, Jeff Wren, no offense, Jeff, love you. But And and kind of mimic the uh, over-the-heel game like Dale Pauldy had when they even won in the past at uh, Pomona with in and out on the car. Uh, so, you know, it's cool, man. It's, 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 it's so now. And what I mean by that, right now in pop culture is a wave of nostalgia. Look what's popular you know, Stranger Things with its nostalgia take. And you've got people, you know, movies are being remade that were popular in a whole other time and era. And you have nostalgia everywhere. And I feel yeah. like we're getting that, but branded in a whole new way. in and out and NHRA drag racing just is connected historically. And we're going to get it again and into the future. It's just good. It's just, it's just a perfect fit, right? It just sounds right. Yes. At Pomona, Southern California, you know, it just sounds cool. And I want to just say this real quick. So obviously one of our guests tonight, Steve Gibbs, um, obviously Nitro Revival at Irwindale and actually this weekend, well, one of their timing um, scoreboards, I'm not sure if it's still like this, but what well, had the in and out sign on it, one of the scoreboards had in and out on it. And actually a few years ago, Hot Rod Magazine and In-N-Out Burger actually sponsored a like nostalgia car show type event at Pomona Raceway um, of just a few years back. So In-N-Out, they've, they've been around, but I'm happy to see them step up like how they're doing uh, in 2023 and beyond at Pomona. What's your favorite order from In-N-Out? You get to have it often, not as much as me, but what do you order? <laughs> so I'm going to go a little bit of a rant before I say that. So here in LA, In-N-Out, it is hard to get In-N-Out because the drive through line is like wrapped around the corner. Every In-N-Out you go to it. It is wrapped around the corner, so I'm not lazy. People are lazy. I get out the car and I go inside because it, it just it's just faster. But if uh, if we're going with order, I'm going double double. No pickles. I mean, no tomatoes, fries, a Coke and a milkshake. Got to do both. Coke and a milkshake. Vanilla. What about you? I don't get in and out often, and I just keep it simple. It's just the normal burger, fries, and yes, I like a vanilla milkshake. I have got to do animal style soon. Everybody talks about that, that that's the way to do it. And I've, I've never, never had it. it. So I've got to try it myself. I've got to do it. I've never done it either. I got to try it out. Yeah. I gotta are, try are, it. You, are, you, are you are you coming to Pomona? Maybe. It's up in the air. All right. So if you come to Pomona, you want to do the hat or in and out? Which one? You got to choose. Both. Uh, yeah, we could do both. Yeah, we can do both. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool with me. All right, man. So great news there for the world of drag racing. But we had a great event at the Strip oh, at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. You were there in attendance. I was not able to be there handling some uh, extreme personal family matters. I'll put it that way. But what a I did catch the national event broadcast on Fox Sports 1. And what a great event we had there for NHRA Drag Racing at the Strip. So much to talk about from Tony Stewart to Justin Ashley to Erica Enders, wrapping it up. So where would you like to go first, man? You were there. What do you, what do you feel is up there at the top? Okay, first, 
the winner's curse is here. The winner's curse has arrived in the countdown. If you want to race the top field, you are going out first round the very next race. It is 1999 all over again. If you're Joel Model winning a race, you're going out first round. If you're Gary Selzy winning a race, you're going out first round. If you're Mike Dunn winning a race, you're going out first round. It is crazy to see. And I'll tell you what, we got a badass battle on our hand between Brittany Forrest, Justin Ashley, Mike Salinas, and Tron Brown going right down to our at Pomona's. It'll be so much fun. I'll tell you what, and, and Brittany Forrest just gets the biggest crowd pops out there. Her and Erica Enders, like, like we all know John gets the big crowd pops, but Brittany and Erica get the biggest crowd pops when they win. And so it was just really cool to see. And seven points separate one and two on the points. I mean, it don't get no closer to that. You cannot make this stuff up. It is about to be wild out of Southern California. I agree. We have got a great final coming up. Certainly Las Vegas has set the stage. I expect Justin Ashley to perform very well in this oh, yeah. last race because if you look at the yeah. track record he's gone out first round many other times this year in fact but he, he bounce bounces back. back very strong yeah. in the next event even winning yeah. at least like a semifinal round appearance and i didn't have enough time to go check back each and every time but i know he at least is at least has a quarter final finish he doesn't go out back to back round one and yes, you mentioned that little winner's curse. It, it seems to rear its ugly head again. Could we <laughs> see Brittany Force go out round one at Pomona? Granted, she has not gone out round one all of the, the countdown. She has at least made it to the quarterfinals. I think the winner's curse gets broken in Pomona. And Brittany Force will be your 2022 NHRA top field champion of the world. Wow, there we have it. There we have it. Well, I'm going to go Team Justin. I think Justin Ashley will get the 2022 NHRA Top Fuel Eliminator Championship. Granted, we haven't mentioned like Max Salinas. He is in oh, there yes. as well. He's still there as well. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And I'll tell you what, I am not, I like if Justin wins it, I'd be so happy. Like that dude deserves it. Like 100%. I would not be mad if Justin wins it. Like that, that is a bad dude right there. But I mean, how about Clay Milliken not getting down the racetrack at all and qualifying four attempts? He does not get down the racetrack at all and lays down a 69 in first round. Where did that come from? Right. Where did that come from? Thus, it is the world of drag racing for sure, and especially top fuel this year. I find it fitting, though. We have Matt Hagen win with Robert Hyde in the final at Las Vegas. We go into Pomona, and we have got a scenario where I think – the big three of funny car period. I don't mean that just in performance, but I think oh, yeah. these are the front runners. These are the yeah. people we want in the three way battle Royale each and every week. They're carrying yeah. the bar for funny car, yes. Matt Hagen, Robert Hyde, and Ron Katz. It is down upon them going into the finals. I can't, it's going to be, it's hard to pick one. Matt's got hot at the right time. Ron has never been out of it. And Robert has just been the strongest overall all year. The storylines coming in, what a heavyweight fight we've got going into Pomona. Heavyweight prize fight. Robert Height, Ron Capps, Matt Hagen, the top three cars all year long, excluding Bob Task in the summer. But here's the thing. Robert Height missed a golden opportunity to basically close the door on this thing in the final round at Las Vegas. I mean, 81 points is still doable, but still, I mean, 80, that's kind of, that's kind of tough to come back with, even from points and a half missed a golden opportunity. I still, Rob, I still think Robert has the advantage. Won the winter nationals always runs great at Pomona. The yes. key for the key for Hagen and caps because caps is backed by 61. Hagen is backed by 63. The key is to get this thing under 60 points going into eliminations, get this thing under 60 points. That's two rounds. That's the key. Gobble up those little points and make it easier on yourself going into final eliminations. We'll see how it all plays out, but uh, this thing is not over. I, I, I'm like I said, man, we are, we are in for a treat in two weeks, man. This is gonna be so cool. We are well, folks. We've got a transition here very soon. We're gonna get our insider on, which happens to be Bobby Bennett himself, owner of CompetitionPlus.com. But we do have on the show tonight as guests Ron Caps. Caps is gonna pop in really quickly, and then he's gonna pop back out. We have got Steve Gibbs former competition director for the NHRA, long-time legend in the world of drag racing. But that is not it, Darren, as our guest. We're going to have more on the show as well. Erica Enders is going to pop in with it's us. five time. And, yeah, yeah, five time. Five time, five time, five time, five time. I think I said five there. It's hard to count when you're saying it all in uh, <laughs> one time for five time. But we're going to have her come on very quickly and Bill Wyndham. So we have got a packed show. It's more than Ron. It's more than Steve. It's plenty of people here on the Competition Plus Power Hour. All of this 
brought to you by Weldon High Performance Pumps. I like to say it this way. If they can do pumps for airplanes, they certainly can handle the pumps for your high-performing machine. Check out Weldon High Performance. They pump up the power hour. Bobby Bennett, give us that juicy insider information tonight. Uh, unmute yourself. Un- unmute. <laughs> unmute. Uh, got a drink. Everybody got a drink. Take a drink. He's still talking. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. All right. Hold on. All right. <laughs> Red Solo <laughs> Cup. <laughs> hey. Hey, guys. A hundred episodes. Man, you guys have killed it. Great job. Great job in slamming Sam uh, off in Jamaica. But uh, got the, got it. You know, the, the thing that uh, makes me more proud or almost as proud of making 100 uh, episodes, I never thought I'd be wearing my Philly stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 15 home runs in three games. <sighs> okay. Reason is, is, I would have been a baseball player if I wouldn't have been in drag race. So there you go. Uh, so uh, we had a little nugget pop up on the uh, rumor mill today. Did you guys get a chance to see that? I have no. not fully seen it. No, no. All right. Well, uh, apparently the crew chief carousel is going to start turning right after Pomona. And from what we hear, there is a. Uh, well-known funny cartooner headed back to Top Fuel. Well, Can you? That's uh, one of them. No. The, uh, no. Okay. Okay. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Well, hey, no. every, everybody in the comments section. I can tell section, you that they're returning to familiar surroundings. In the comments section, let us know your thoughts. Bobby might not be able to let it right now, but let us know your thoughts. Who from Funny Car is going to Top Fuel? If I revealed that, I would be kicked out of Rumorville. <laughs> tell you what, just like my buddy Big Willie, uh, Big Willie used to say, Bobby tells you, if Bobby tells you a rooster will lay an egg, you better get a pan ready. A rooster about to drop one. Right? There you go. Okay. All right. Well, here's another thing that I believe is coming very soon, and it was very, it was hinted at at Vegas. And it looks like the nostalgia uh, funny cars, the legends, uh, the Nitro legends could become a more permanent fixture on the NHRA tour next year. And, and the thought is, the thought process is, is that this gives the, uh, the uh, a, a better stepping stone to, to the Nitro funny cars, uh, the big show funny cars, than the, uh, you know, the, top alcohol funny cars and it's more along the lines uh, of what they're racing so a big hit the the they put on a great show it was a very clean uh clean program and uh it was it was really well done so so anyway uh so uh the latest news on factory uh, x are you ready is it still nothing <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> yep, there you go. Yep. <laughs> we do hear that uh, the elite team is going to expand next year some more. Don't have a whole lot of details on that, but that's that's what we got coming. Uh, this weekend, we will uh, be at the Nitro Revival, myself and uh, the, uh, the largely heralded assistant editor, of competition plus Darren Williams will be there. We'll be living up the good old days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so guys just stay tuned. We got a great show for you tonight. And I'm telling you what, Lee, I'm so proud of you guys. 
you did it. <laughs> 100, certainly a great milestone. Uh, Bobby, thank you for the platform and allowing this to be added to your great platform overall, competitionplus.com. Yeah. Anything else, man? Uh, actually, somebody uh, mentioned about the Terry Haddock deal. Yes. And if you look, Susan Wade has written a very good uh, good article on Competition Plus, and shame on you guys for not reading that, that basically details everything that happened uh, with the Terry Haddock uh, disqualification. If you go back and watch the Friday, uh, the Friday live feed, you'll see a crewman goes down to reach to pull the latch to open up the latch, and one of the latches – comes off of the body uh, and instead of putting it back in they just held it and went with one for fear that uh, that you know it would have came off and cut the tire which is in that article that Susan Wade uh, wrote and did a good job of it and the NHRA told their side now what's getting to be a problem is is when we have safety violations that we know are safety violations and we're sending cars down the track and then throwing out the run afterwards. You see my issue here? Yes. We, if it's a safety violation at the st- at the finish line, it dang sure is a safety violation at the starting line. And somebody needs to be adjusting their way of doing business because this is it's crap. It's crap. They know it. You know it. We know it. Everybody knows it. So, Right, NHRA needs to fix it because they they are are knocking down the so many good things that they're doing by doing knick knack patty whack crap like that. I agree. So they're you know check check out that article, uh, you know, and John Medlin, John Medlin, even though we we got the word that he was going to be stepping back uh, after Dallas. I think uh, Ron Caps is not very good at keeping secrets. So if you got a secret, don't tell it to Caps. But <laughs> anyway, Caps uh, revealed that Medlin is going to be stepping back a bit next year. And again, mm-hmm. Susan Wade had a very good article on John Medlin talking about stepping back. Mm-hmm. So we've been doing our best to stay on top of things here. I, I was with Susan. I was with Susan in Vegas when she was uh, interviewing John Medlin. And, you know, he just kind of seemed at peace with his decision, and everything like that. So obviously, John Medlin, great career, has done a lot for Nitro Racing, has given his life to the sport. So um, I commend John Medlin, not John Medlin, on everything he's done. Right, right. No, uh, and, and Andrew mentioned the elite running Nitro. No, not next year that we know of. Uh, they have toyed with the idea. They do have somebody in house that has nitro experience, in Michael Brotherton, but uh, it's not not that I know of is on the table. They just have a formula to make it work. That's a throwback name, Michael Brotherton. Wow. Yeah, okay. I like it. I like it. Had, elite, had elite performance. I like it. That's it, guys. That's what I got for you. All right, Bobby, thank you as always. And ladies and gentlemen, Competition Plus is not only the place you can go to believe everything you can read off the site for the world of drag racing. Go ahead. Hold on, one other thing. And today NHRA announced that uh, Pomona's long-term. And uh, you know what? We don't give any kind of recognition to these fake news websites, which are nothing but clickbait. If you're going to be real media, you do your work, do your homework, and quit ruining the industry for the rest of us. If you want clickbait, you can always go to porn. We don't need you in drag. <laughs> I like it. My it, pisses me off. it pisses me uh, off. The, Some the, of us have poured our hearts into this craft for, for 20 and 30 years, and then some uh, jack leg ding comes along. Oh, well, Pomona's going away. No, it's not, you idiot. Nope. You know it's not. Nope. Just because your cousin Ernie told you that doesn't mean it's fact. Yep. That was it was a knee-jerk reaction to news that wasn't completely out and complete. Mm-hmm. And and that that particular site has on other occasions thrown out smut as well. So yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. Yep. But you believe 
what you read on competitionplus.com. And also, there's cool swag, like nostalgia, Scotty Cannon, Cannon, funny car stuff. Well, Darren, Bobby mentioned the legend Nitro Funny Cars or Nostalgia Funny Cars. They had their showing running 1,000 feet there at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, the Strip, and had a good showing, good competition, yeah, great, great racing. Yeah. You're close to those guys. You cover those guys. You oftentimes talk to those drivers and team mm -hmm. members and owners on your American Hot Rod Entertainment. So – what was the a vibe, if you will, amongst that crowd being at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the big national event? What did they think of it all? I tell you what, all of them had so much fun. They said NHRA was nice to them. They accommodated them the whole way. The fans stayed in the crowd whenever the Nostalgia Funny Cars came up. They put on a great showing. Even at 1,000 foot, they still went down there, a clean show. I think the only problem they had was on Friday night when they ran the Jet Dragster before their second qualifying session, and they didn't really prep the track as good for them. I know a lot of people in the left lane, and they said they're all over the racetrack and really had to drive those things. But other than that, other than that, they said it was a great show. They had a lot of fun, and, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better final round. Bobby Cottrell driving for, for the legend Bucky Austin in that uh, Bucky's Auto Center Chevy Camaro, taking on the problem child, Billy Morris, Eddie Knox Racing, final round. You got your California Hot Rod Reunion champion taking on your, your series champion, final round, and obviously, you know, Bobby Cottrell got the win. So all around just a great show and happy to hear they'll be, you know, at more national events going forward. So really cool news. It is really cool news that they kind of get that nod. They're beautiful race cars. Yes. They are powerful race cars, and they give a good representation of what was and what is now. Yeah. And, you know, people stepping into that nostalgia funny car ride right now may be the truest stepping stone to yeah. a big show car. Granted, we're going to have the injected nitro in the funny car ranks amongst top alcohol funny car next year. So that does provide another avenue. Granted, uh, what the nostalgia funny cars are providing is huge right now in the world of drag racing. It's huge, though, Darren, that at least in one class of the Camping World Series, we don't worry about who's going to win the championship. We already know. So dominating... This year, mm -hmm. Erica mm -hmm. Enders just blows the countdown system out of the water. doesn't matter how you want to calculate the points. She is the champion. One of the most dominating seasons in pro stock history. On uh, not even a, like I was gonna say all on her way to a Hall of Fame career. It is a Hall of Fame career, and the legends she has put her name up up there with. Uh, one of only few drivers in the class to win ten or more races in a single season. You think of Daryl Alderman won eleven in ninety one. You think of Jack Coughlin won ten in two thousand. Uh, Greg Anderson won fifteen in two thousand four. I believe he won like. 13 in 2003 i think it was maybe 13 but then you got erica enders doing it for the first time since then when it's in this season i mean those are some great guys guys to be accompanied with jack coughlin daryl alderman greg anderson and just i mean she flat out i mean just kicked the competition's butt this year no more nice erica and she went out there and flat out just spanked them yes just let it be known for everybody you don't want not so nice erica because yeah. she's coming to whip your tail. <laughs> but but here's the thing, though. It's like, so we know she has a great race car, right? Great team, yes. obviously a performance advantage. But the driver still has to get the job done. For her yes. to stay that great for the whole season, I mean, that just goes to show just how much of a badass race car driver she is. You know, to stay in the zone, stay locked in, continue to do her job behind the race car, good on reaction time, keeping that car straight, on her shift points, all the way down the racetrack. I mean, it's it's simply amazing, like. Man, one of the greatest seasons of pro stock history. And then they don't even go to yeah. all the races. And further still right. uh, knock off 10 races, amazing. Yeah, well, I firmly believe she's going to win out. I, I said that back at the Texas Motorplex, that she was going to win out throughout, you know, Texas Motorplex, Las Vegas, and Pomona. And, you know, these 
several of these tracks are in her wheelhouse. Obviously, Las Vegas. It seems like she doesn't lose there, yeah. and she does well at Pomona. Also, so I expect her to place that cherry on top, if you will, of a championship and winning the last race of the year in 2022. So, yeah, for anyone in their basement to someone behind the wheel <laughs> yakking, you do not want to have not so nice Erica. She got on the wheel and off the clutch pedal and smashed that throttle uh, to another championship. Five championships for Erica Enders. And you also have to say she is one of the greatest female competitors in motorsports, period. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. So funny story real quick. So after she wins the race in Las Vegas, right? Um, in the media center, she she does her media center interview, right? And she walks out and I go, I go, Daryl Alderman, eleven ninety one. And she just smiles and goes, oh, 1191. Like, it's like, who are you? And why are you talking? What are you talking about? Like, it was just funny, her reaction. But I think she got understood it afterwards. But um, yeah, man, I hope she wins out and, and ties Daryl. Because, I mean, that would tie her for, I guess, third for all time in the class. So as far as, like, most wins in a single season. So I hope she gets it done. Right. And, but, uh, you know, you start looking at percentage and, like, depending on what era and time we're talking, yeah. again, it makes the year – that much yeah. more impressive for sure. Uh, Kroger sucks 45 to answer your question is a thousand foot the norm for those nostalgia funny cars. No, it's not. Actually, no. they run quarter mile most of the time. Uh, when yeah. you see them at March meet for their, uh, their Bowling Green or if they're at the uh, California Hot Rod Reunion, most of the time it is a quarter mile. So that was new for them. Yeah. It was cool seeing them go like 470s, 480s, you know, kind of kind of throwback mid 2000 big show nitro numbers. You know, obviously they ran at a thousand uh, quarter mile, but it's kind of cool to see, you know, you know, it's rare when you've seen a 477 up on the board again. Remember, that was like the, the big numbers back in the day. So really cool to see. And I tell you what, like those dudes, they pound the ground like they look cool at night. You see the header flames, you know, obviously the header flames come out around like, you know, 60 feet or something like that. But just an all around great show. The, the cars look cool. The drivers are cool. If you ever want to meet any of the drivers, they let you in their pit, talk to them. Uh, they give you free water. I mean. I mean, I mean, just a, a great show. What was that in the background? That was a dog. Oh, okay. Where, I was I'm, like, where I'm at. <laughs> like, uh, I was like, whelping. wow. Yes, I'm surprised that it was heard that over that. That's how loud <laughs> that whelp, uh, whelp was. Wow. So, uh, Darren, what do you think of Pro Stock Motorcycle? It seems like Matt Smith has got this, but there are still mathematical chances for elsewhere for it to happen, but also, Hector Arana Jr., I said it on this show right here, that he could definitely play spoiler and cause some pain for, no, for championship sure. contenders, and he has done it two races in a row now. No, for sure. Back-to-back -back wins on the season has proven, you know, if he was out here full-time, he'll be breaking hearts and everything like that. But as far as the championship goes, uh, I, I think it's over. Like, I love Joey Glassstone, and he was, you know, I, I was I was giving him a real chance, but I think it, it's about over. Matt Smith is, is about to become a six-time world champion, tying him with the great Dave Schultz and Andrew yeah. Hines. So um, just what an all-around great season, going back between the Suzuki and the V-Twin. I mean, Matt Smith is a man, and uh, he's about to wrap it up in Pomona. And that's what I believe. I It certainly does lean that way. We would have to have a I believe, what was it 2020 when uh you had the just wild day of pro stock motor oh, 2019 yeah 2019, <laughs> so, excuse me yeah, yes 2019. and you have a complete reversal in who you thought would have it and wouldn't have it because of breakage and who went on to win yeah just insane day yeah it would have yeah. to be that again can that happen yes no, do okay, i think yes. do i think lightning strikes twice no matt yeah. smith just works that hard and I think they are certainly going to get it done in Pomona as well. Uh, Darren, look, we had a great event there at Las Vegas for the professional categories. Good to see the Nostalgia Funny Cars. And as we wait for Erica to come in studio and talk with her, Darren, a lot of people were licensing on Monday and a lot of different rides. Mm -hmm. Lyle Barnett in a A-Fuel Dragster, a Randy Meyer That's machine, cool. I believe. You've got... Uh, uh, the young Haddock boy, uh, Terry Haddock's boy, McKaylin, he got behind the uh, Fool's Aaron ride that Terry Haddock owns and attempted the license. You also have Cameron for Ray's wife got behind the wheel of a nostalgia funny car. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people uh, burning all nitro attempting to license in whatever vehicle they were in. Nah, it, it is super cool, too. I didn't know that. So Tim Boychuk, we talking about Nostalgia Funny Car. Tim Boychuk's daughter 
is the wife of Cameron Foray. I didn't know that. And so obviously, like you said, she was uh, testing the the happy hour Chevy Camaro Nostalgia Funny Car yesterday. And then, like you said, you got Lyle Barnett, one of the greatest pro mod drivers out there, licensing the A-field. And then um, Haddock's boy, I mean, how cool is it? I didn't even know he was old enough to drive a car. I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know how old he was. He looked super young. So that's super cool to see him behind the wheel of a race car. How did it go? I, I was driving back home from Vegas yesterday. I wasn't able to keep up um, on the results. How did, how did it go yesterday during testing? Well, as Scott Malpass has, has said, yes, Lyle did license. Tony signed his license, and I mentioned Tony okay. signing his license. I can't remember the other lady uh, who signed the license as well, but he licensed an A-Fuel. Definitely expect him to be an A-Fuel dragster a few times next year. Hey, Lyle, nice. if you're watching, you know, Nitro Chaos, perfect place to take an A-Fuel dragster and compete whether it is Eddieville or Mocan Dragway for Nitro Chaos. But he got his license. I'm not sure on Cam's wife what happened mm. there, but I don't think McKaylin was able to uh, license. Uh, he's got to make a few more runs, but it's cool to hear these other people uh, licensing. Oh, for sure. And, and for him, for, for, for Haddock's son, I mean, that dude is so passionate and you could tell he has the eye of the tiger. He has that passion for this. Yeah, right. He's going to get it done. Like you could tell just from all his work he does on social media and everything like that. Um, but whose car was, was loud, uh, licensing, licensing yesterday. I believe whose it was, was a Randy Meyer machine. Randy Meyer. Okay. Okay. Great prepare race car. Oh, prepare certainly. Race. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. Well, we do have uh miss five time, five time, five time, five time, five time in the green room if she's ready uh we'll bring her on and uh, she does look ready so congratulations miss enders thank you how are y'all doing great doing, doing great. great how's las vegas so far <laughs> i am so ready to leave this place <laughs> <laughs> hey lee we forgot to, whenever a champion comes on what we got to do a round of applause man Yes, let's do it. Round of applause. Champ. Yes, for the champ. For the champ. Five, uh, time. five time. Five time. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, just an impressive year. You put it all together. And it's not done yet. Like I told you, I expect you to win out. I think you're going to win out. You're only one more race away from doing that. And I'm sure that's exactly what you want to do. The season is not over. It's not done. You're not breathing easy yet. <laughs> no, it's definitely not over. We have one to go. Um, I'm really thankful that we wrapped the championship up here in Vegas. This place uh, certainly means a lot to me. And, and we were able to seal the deal here in 2015, wrapping the championship up early as well. So um, just winning here at my favorite track again was awesome. And, and uh, you know, my guys, just they worked their tails off for me. So I'm going to go into Pomona relaxed and, and ready and just try to go to battle again and, and bring home an 11th uh, national event for the for the season. But either way, um, I think the biggest goal heading into Pomona will be to, to close off on a really great note. We've had a, an epic year and uh, we need to solidify the number two and number three positions for our other elite motorsports drivers. So I'm going to go to battle for those guys and see if I can take out some of the heavy hitters and uh, that allows them to get enough points to stay in the number two and number three position. Well, Erica, first off, like I want to say congratulations on the championship and a great weekend in Las Vegas. I mean, just basically kicked the field's butt out there. Do you do you remember Sunday after the race when I came up to you awkwardly and said, Daryl Alderman, 1191? I mean, because that was, was, that was kind of awkward the way I walked up to you. Do you remember I that do, at all? I do. I do remember that now. And I honestly, like, I don't even know. I don't even remember it being you. It was such a whirlwind <laughs> and I was so exhausted. I just wanted to lay on the floor in the winter circle and eat something and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lee, I, I just I was like 11. I just said 11 Daryl Alderman 91. That's all I said. That was it. And just walked away. That was it. Yeah, that's all you yeah. said. That's it. that's it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, I'm I'm curious, you know, after the championship, like, do you go throw some, you know, money anywhere else, a casino, see how you do, you know? No, I don't gamble. I'd rather go shopping and buy something and have something to show for it than to to donate it to keep building these large casinos. But no, uh, we uh, we actually um we went and had breakfast at the Pepper Mill, which is right across the street from our, our hotel here in Vegas. If you've never been, you should go. It's awesome. Um, me and my sister and a couple of friends went over there and had breakfast. And then we headed back here and met the rest of our entire team in the lobby. Um, we had one shot and uh, I went to bed. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And so, Erica, you mentioned something in your winner's interview. You were saying, you know, you listed out the goals that you had before the season started. Obviously, like we said, 10 wins so far this year. But you is it true you said you only basically want to win five races this year? You pretty much doubled that. I mean, blew it out of the water. I mean, is that true? Only five wins is kind of like on your list of, of, of goals to kind of, uh, I guess, write off this year? Yeah. Um, on New Year's Day, I always sit down and write out my goals for, 
different areas of my life and in, in racing, obviously it's the most important area. And, um, you know, I, I just said, I wanted to have a successful season. The world championships always on the list, but I wanted to, uh, I thought winning five would be a, a, re a really great season. And, uh, we, like you said, we've been able to double that and it's awesome. So, um, the, the competition stout, it's uh, it's a little different than it used to be back in the day uh, with people like Alan Johnson and Mike Edwards and Kurt Johnson and Warren Johnson when, when Jed Coughlin, all these guys were racing um, when I first started and it was ultra competitive and, you know, it's a little bit different now and, and it's crazy. So um, I thought five would be a great goal and we were able to exceed that. So I'm happy. All right, Erica, we understand that you've got to get to a meeting. We're pressed for time, Las Vegas, all that good stuff. So last question for you. Big news today announced at SEMA. In and out, back with NHRA in a big way at Pomona with naming rights and also for the finals. What do you think about that? And, hey, you got a red car. I mean, in and out would look pretty good on there, too. Heck, yeah. We were talking about that today as we were leaving SEMA, how, uh, how awesome it would be to add in and out to our – to our roster but no i'm super excited about that you know people even this weekend at las vegas were asking you know what is the future what is the future hold for pomona because they keep seeing all this scuttlebutt online about them turning it into a housing addition and whatnot and i always just dismiss it i mean you hear a lot of rumors out there but um the nhra museum is there and that track is just um you know, you look back at the old pictures there from the 50s and 60s, and it's just awesome. So to see that Lindsay Snyder and her family uh, with in and out Burger jumped on board and it's going through 2033 is, uh, is some awesome news. So that at least means we'll be racing in Pomona for the next 10 years. Yes, we will. And I imagine you will be too. Erica, <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Audience. Y'all as well. I'm sure that NHRA Museum is going to have an Erica Ender's Pro Stalker in there at oh, some sure. point. It's going to be like, here's here's the the one that was five-time or six-time or seven-time, and it's sitting right there uh, next to the greats of like Bernstein and Muldowney and so many others of drag racing. Hey, hey Lee, let me, let me ask you a question. So, obviously, a few years ago, Obviously, you know, the pro stock cars used to do the full pool. Obviously, they've, they've cut back a few races uh, so far. But with how healthy the class is, you talk about all the young drivers now, the full fields we get, um, just, you know, obviously the new four program that's rumored to come next year. Do you feel like pro stock should go back to the full pool uh, for the foreseeable future? I mean, I think it's a... Uh... No, I don't think so. The reason why is because that was decisions. The number we've got was decided upon by the racers. Okay. NHRA actually wanted less. They said, hey, give us two more. You know, they even added on a 19th this year to accommodate Maple Grove and obviously pro stock people owning it now. Do I think they could do it? Yes, I think they could. But I think mm -hmm. you have got this health in the class mm -hmm. partially due to a partial schedule. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and I've said it many times, that I think the NHRA should use that to their advantage. Right now, they have partial schedules for Pro Stock Motorcycle and Pro Stock. Mm -hmm. Nitro runs the full pool, if you will. Well, use that to your advantage in doing some different things with scheduling. Because you also have Pro Mod that mm -hmm. runs a partial schedule compared to everyone else. Granted, they're in their own thing within the NHRA world. So I think they could do some unique to NHRA at least, changes with the schedule uh, to accommodate everyone and put them on the biggest stage. And to accommodate in such a way that the, oh, we don't get as much exposure as we think we should is mm -hmm. worked out differently. I think there could be some changes. I think it's worked out, and I don't see any need to to change it uh, right there. So okay. let's uh, – Let's uh, continue moving on here, Darren. We've got uh, Bill Wyndham in the green room. Folks, we're going to take a break, and we're going to bring Bill on right after this word from one of the newest sponsors with the Competition Plus Power Hour on CompetitionPlus.com. You all are going to be familiar with it. And, Darren, don't freak out, but it's peak. If you want to take your vehicle's performance to new heights, you got to give it peak. Like our original equipment technology, antifreeze and coolant, our formulas match the vehicle manufacturer's technology requirements so that we have the perfect match for every vehicle. That's one reason why Peak is among the fastest growing brands of coolant in America. We work harder to earn the trust of people like you every day.
Mr. Wyndham, thank you for being so patient. We are able to finally get you on. Good to have you on the Competition Plus Power Hour. What is going on with you these days, man? Hey, guys. Happy to be here. Uh, yeah, we've had a busy couple of weeks, so I'm pretty worn out. We uh, get back <laughs> with the reunion and just the process of getting the cars ready and loading up and heading to Bakersfield like two weeks ago and setting up, running that race, coming straight over to Vegas on Monday and setting up on Tuesday. And I drove the rig back myself last night, got home about nine o'clock. So it's been, yeah, it's been a long stretch, but um, happy to be here. So, Bill, obviously it was a great showing for the Nostalgia Funny Cars, the Legends Nitro Funny Cars out of Las Vegas. You know, I don't know, you were kind of the one who kind of brung this all together. Could you just tell, kind of tell us, you know, how you kind of pulled that off and, and were able to bring the funny cars to Las Vegas? Uh, yeah, we actually started this process um, at, the, at the finals at Pomona last year. We had conversations. Um, I have a friend, of, well, two friends of mine. They're both, uh, they're not racers, but they're big fans. And I've been running this Nostalgia car for about five years and they just love the class and we had conversations about how, you know, we really feel these cars belong on, on a bigger stage. So the, the conversations we had at Pomona led to um, our first meeting with uh, the uh, management at NHRA around February, started the conversation, um, had a complete proposal laid out, probably seven or eight pages. I think our first meeting was going to be an hour and I think it ended up about three or three and a half hours. So. Good conversation. We talked about the possibility of running a series, maybe eight to 10 races at national events in conjunction with running the Heritage Series races that we currently do at Bakersfield and Boise. Um, so we, we started the conversation, laid out a proposal. We worked on it all year long. It took a long time. We talked to a lot of the racers. Everybody was way up for it. And uh, we had several meetings and lots of phone calls with NHRA and, and uh, we worked out the details. And so uh, Vegas is basically to be our showcase for these cars and to show, you know, the level of racing that we do. Um, the people that attend the March meet and the, the Hot Robert Union are, are familiar and they, they love these cars. They're real fast. I had a lot of people at the, at the Vegas track, including the safety safari guys, come up to me and go, wow, we had no idea these cars were that fast. And uh, they're legit race cars with really cool bodies. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we did a lot of work to get here. And hopefully this is going to lead to bigger and better things. But I'm super proud of all of our guys. I, I handpicked every one of them. Uh, it was an invitation, uh, invitational event with an eight-car uh, qualifier. And they all did a great job. They showed a lot of professionalism. The cars ran great side-by-side -side racing, great burnouts. Um, it went really well. I'm totally pleased with it. I personally didn't perform that well with my car, but it's okay. It was about the, uh, the event for me. So, uh, Bill, we had Andrew Osterhaus ask in particular with the Nostalgia Funny Cars and what all has been worked out and the potential of more races next year. Will they just be more central and west coast located or are you able to get to the east coast at all i know that crowd would work great at epping new hampshire for example they run some nostalgia funny cars up there routinely and it would be the perfect spot but is east coast on the table as well 100 percent. i mean there's a lot of cars on the west coast but there's a lot of cars that are running throughout the midwest the east coast and the south and so forth so my personal opinion is I think this thing's really going to blow up. And I think there's a lot of cars that will come out of the woodwork. It's at an affordable level, I think, for a lot of people like me that can come out here and run without, you know, having a four or five million dollar budget. And, uh, yeah, I want to I want to I want to see this thing go across the country. I think, you know, originally we talked about West Coast races, but I think we can uh, do this to where it's going to accommodate both the East Coast, West Coast. And then we'll, we can make it work. So we're we're still in the infancy of this. We're talking about it after Pomona. We'll have more meetings and discussing it. And what races would work? We don't want them to be in a, a conflict with a current heritage race. Um, so we have to make all those things work. And uh, but yeah, that's that's on the table. Running back east, I love to do that. And I've I've run every track in the country at some point. I've run a bunch of different classes over the years. So there's some great great tracks back east. And uh, who knows? One of these days we'll be at the U.S. Nationals. I hope. Oh, man. Seeing Nostalgia Funny Cars at the U.S. Nationals, that would be so cool. And, and, yeah. and Bill, I'm a big proponent of the Heritage Series. I go to the I go to the March meet in the California Hot Rod Reunion all the time. Uh, so like you said, you're still in talks and it's still in its, in its infancy. 
but I mean, eight to 10 races is what you guys are shooting for. Will this be like a point steal? Like at the end of it, we'll crown a champion and everything like that uh, as, along with the Heritage Series or how can we see this all play out? Um, you know, we're working on that now too. I've talked, I've had talks with Blake Bowser at Bakersfield and Scott and him at, uh, at Firebird Raceway. And I'd like to see us uh, figure a way to kind of integrate the points with the Heritage Races and our Legends Nitro Funny Car Races. And uh, we're working with, we've got a lot of sponsors. We brought a lot, of, we brought 17 sponsors on for this race. So there's a lot of interest out there. And what we're trying to accomplish is having good payouts with the championship fund at the end of the year. And uh, a lot of this is predicated on us, uh, you know, achieving those, you know, those levels with sponsors and so forth. But right now, in fact, my partner's at SEMA today and has had some great conversations. And, uh, you know, with Redline stepping up as our title sponsor for Vegas, um, I think we, uh, I think we made them proud this weekend. And so hopefully uh, we'll get everybody on next year to, to help fund this whole thing. Um, you know, a lot of our teams are, are, you know, we have people on our, on our crews that have jobs, you know, they're not full-time paid employees, like at the big show level. So we got to make everything work. And, and that's a lot of coordinating with, with the, you know, which tracks, you know, what times or what dates I should say, um, all that stuff. But, uh, and then the sponsors, what cities we're in will dictate what sponsors we're able to bring on. So there's a whole lot of work to be done now. And I think I was just holding my breath. I wanted to make sure Vegas went well so that we can now move forward with, with uh, the talks we've had in the past and start moving this thing to the next level. Lee, I think you're muted. Oh, sorry, I'm muted. I'm muted. I got to take a drink <laughs> myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, excuse me. So, last question for you, Bill. Thank you for your time. We got to get Ron Caps on here briefly as well before we get to Mr. Steve Gibbs. Got him back in the green room. Very quickly, what makes the nostalgia funny car different from what people are used to seeing at an NHRA national event that like Ron Caps himself would drive? You know, we're, we're kind of a throwback thing. It's, it, these cars are basically current race cars. I mean, we run the same, I have the same cubic inch motor that Ron Caps has in his car. So we run a lot of the same parts. Uh, we're limited on fuel pump. We can only run 21 gallons uh, a minute. We can only run a 671 blower with a single mag. So it limits us. But at the same time, I don't. I think when these rules were put in place 10 or 15 years ago, nobody in their nobody in their wildest dreams thought we would be as fast as we are. I mean, the record in this class now, I believe, is a 552 at 267 in the quarter mile. And if you look at it on paper, it doesn't look possible. So it just goes to show how good, how you know, the, the crew chiefs in this class and how good these, you know, these guys are. So, and gals. So uh, it, the, the difference, I think, basically is we're doing kind of a throwback deal with older body styles. And our cars, they, they have characters, you know. They're, my car is called the Shakedown and Billy Morrison, the problem child, and Tim Boychuk in the happy hours. You know, we have that kind of character thing going on. Um, that that was happening back in the day when it was snake and mongoose and all the rest. So I think the fans have kind of been longing for something like this. And you know, the, the, we have just some beautiful cars in this class, and they're just first class operations. We all roll in with semis and and the same level of, of of a pit area, you know, the equipment and stuff like that. So I think a lot of the people were, that hadn't been exposed to it before that saw them for the first time in Vegas were totally, you know, blown away by these cars. I mean, they look great. They're fast. I mean, our, our quickest run was a 472 to a thousand feet and the bump in Big Show was a 412. <laughs> so we don't sound that far, we don't sound that far off. And, and one of the guys went 240 miles an hour, a thousand feet. So that's pretty stout. So I think uh, people were kind of uh, surprised by that. For sure. Hey, glad that you all had a good outing at uh, the Shrip there at Las Vegas and glad that Funny Cars and Stout Stop are getting even more of a bigger platform. And Bill, to you all and the whole gang, you know, I work with a little group called Funny Car Chaos. Love to see any of you guys come out at some point. Thank you for thank you for the time tonight, Bill. You bet. Thanks for having me on, guys. Take care. Darren, good to see Nostalgia Funny Car getting so much limelight here recently. Oh, man, for sure. And he, he he mentioned the guy who went 240. That was Bobby Cottrell driving for the legend Bucky Austin ripped off that 240 in uh, Las Vegas. And it was cool, man. Seeing them, uh, seeing that, that, that green Camaro go down the racetrack. <laughs> I, I went to ask, I was like, 
who is going to be able to stop Bobby Cottrell? Because, I mean, five consecutive Heritage Series championships in a row, that dude is just rolling right now. But you got Billy Morris and the problem child. He's coming on strong. You got guys like James Day um, driving for Cecil Matthews. You got Kamaka Pocock and the California Hustler. I mean, just so many other great cars. Tony Gerardo, Capital, Pun- Capital Punishment. I mean, Nostalgia Funny Car is so fun. And happy to see them, like, get their due and, and be in the limelight now on, on the big show. It's, it's really cool to see. Yes. Well, it uh, looks like Mr. Ron Caps is trying to get things, the technical difficulties worked out. We're going to take a break and take it to him and see if he is ready to go from whatever airport he is in. Uh, oh, well, he actually just dropped out. We'll have to see if he comes <laughs> back in and uh, we'll, we'll chat with him. So, uh, yeah, it's good to see the Nostalgia Funny Cars getting their due. Great cars. And uh, like Bill said, they've got some, I'll say, attitude uh, yeah. with them i think of the peddler you know the yeah Corey the california Lee. shaker you know you think of yeah. they got they got names i i know lyle barnett isn't uh you know not lyle but lyle greenberg isn't quite in that class but cone hunter with his yeah. corvette beautiful machine so uh let's see does ron got it worked out yet is he good to go yes okay we're gonna take a break and bring ron on competition products your source for hardcore engine parts for street strip and oval track Our free catalog is packed with hundreds of product lines from the best-known manufacturers in the performance industry. Lowest prices guaranteed. Free shipping and handling on all orders over $149 in the continental U.S. Need expert advice? Our knowledgeable staff is just a phone call away. Competition products. Race parts sold by racers since 1970. Ron Caps live from whatever airport he is in and traveling about and doing his thing. Uh, well, look, congratulations on Texas. I know Las Vegas wasn't quite probably what you wanted. We, as the fans, are definitely going to get a good show on tomorrow. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Oh, my God. Talk about a day at SEMA. And I apologize to you guys. I thought we were doing the show next week and uh, obviously opening day at SEMA, but I didn't want to miss this, so I'm going to stop here. My gate is boarding pretty soon, but uh, yeah, man, congratulations on the show. This is a great, uh, it's great to be invited for it, but obviously SEMA show, if anybody's ever been, they understand the opening day of SEMA. It's been nuts, and I finally get to fly home, so just got to the Las Vegas airport. And so for everybody, you know, I mentioned how I was like really awkward with Erica on after the after the, the race on Sunday. But Ron, I mean, I just want to say thank you for everything because I had to do a piece with Ron Caps. And I mean, he was just being pulled in different directions. You talk about media, sponsorship, everything, and still took the time out to, to, to shoot the Legends of Nitro funny car deal with me. So I just want to say thank you for that, Ron. But in the middle of a championship battle, you're 61 points behind. You've been in this position many times throughout your career. I mean, you've, I mean, 2005, 2012, uh, the one 2016, 2021. Does it get any easier going to Pomona with a chance of winning a championship? Does the nerves ever get easier, or is it always just always just nerve wracking? No, I talked to Tony Pedregon today. Um, pretty much just kind of going over, you know, the Vegas race and leading into Pomona. We we're almost in the opposite, I guess, position we were last year. So, in other words, we were leading. We came out of the Vegas race leading a little bit. Had not a great lead, and I kept telling people to shut up. Every time somebody said, "You got this," I was like, "No, we don't." Points and a half in Pomona. So, you know, we're, our goal is to go there, and I'm sure it's Hagen's goal as well. And it's 30 points per round. We're 62 behind. So the key thing for us to do is to try to qualify and gain those little points and get it under 60 points. If we can do that, it's under two rounds. And then if we win the race and Robert goes out semis, we're world champions. So that's the mindset we got. So Guido, I talked today. Uh, at SEMA, and it's just going to go through. It's going to be incredible. Pomona, for anybody who doesn't pay attention, time change, uh, daylight savings is going to happen. So by the time we get there, it'll be an hour earlier getting dark. We're calling for mid to low 70s of a high leading into the race. So the weather, the track being as good as it is downhill like it always has been, and it's it's always, you know, Disneyland for crew chiefs, it's going to be throwdown. So you know, it's making the hair on my neck lift up whoops, right now because you just think about that Pomona facility and a championship up for grabs with three, and I don't know if mathematically anybody else is involved, but you're talking about three cars that can throw down, and I'm lucky enough to be strapped into one. So we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun for the fans. It's going to be heartbreaking, and 
for two people, you know, and we'll just see what, what happens Sunday night. So, Ron, what does the legendary Ron Caps, uh, who, who do you fly with? Which airline <laughs> is it? Is it first class, coach, <laughs> you know, business class? Dude, is there a hey, special funny that- car seat for you? No. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Hey, listen, I don't work for Don Perdomo anymore. There's no more jets in and out of. It, that was the easy life when they, we had the jet. My last few years of Snake, but I'm on Southwest, and it's nonstop to San Diego to get home. Uh, we won the <laughs> Dallas race, right? And I had a last flight out of Dallas, and we won last year out of Dallas. And I got there, and I missed the flight uh, this year, and I didn't even care. I went and grabbed a couple of beers, went to a hotel, got another flight in the morning and got out Southwest. So it is what it is. Um, I'm just, I just want to go home. So I normally fly Delta, (laughs) but, uh, and I don't get any money from either one of them, but I'll tell you, man, I'm ready to go home after being here all weekend and having the ups and downs. And if, if people even understood what goes on in these, these camps, when you're fighting for a world championship, it's hard, you know, it's just, it tears your, your stomach apart it tears your soul apart it's every minute every run is incredible so i wouldn't have it any other way you know we're part of of the conversation so it's great and ron we've been talking a lot about the legends nitro funny cars here on this show and we just had your friend bill windham on just a second ago um were you able to catch any of the funny car action from vegas and just kind of talk about you've driven these cars so just talk about what it's like behind the behind the wheel of one of these uh nostalgia funny cars yeah, I love those. They, it's my favorite. You've seen I posted, you know, I started with, you know, really with, with uh, years ago in the Good Guy series and driving Jeff Gaynor's car. But uh, fast forward to Dale Worsham and the Blue Max. I got to drive that legendary car he put together. Uh, the first car back out there with a pedal clutch, which blew people's minds with Nicky Bonifani and, and Bonifani's pedal clutch. Um, and I never miss a March meet and usually not a hot rod reunion, but I always drive at the March meet. And so these cars... You know, the alcohol cars are great, but for somebody that wants to be a nitro funny car driver like myself or Robert Hyde or J.R. Todd or Hagen or whatever, these cars are the perfect car it, to get into if you want to be an, uh, a camping world nitro funny car driver. Everything is the same. As you see in Competition Plus, we did the video, and you can see that I posted it on Facebook. Um, it's a little smaller fuel pump. It's just a baby basically a baby car of what we run. I don't mean baby in a bad way. I just mean the staging procedure is the same, the way you pull the pump, the way you stage the car and the way you drive them. And you actually have to shift the nostalgia car, the legends, uh, nitro cars. So it adds to it. But, um, if you want to be a nitro funny car driver, these are the cars to get in. And I see it growing. I've been on the soapbox forever about the series and the cars and just that whole scene. And, Anybody watching has never been to a March meet, get your tickets. I'm telling you, it is my favorite race. You, I don't care. The U.S. Nationals, it's a great. It was finally great to win it. It's one of the biggest races we have. But the, the March meet at Famoso is, it'll take you back to so many great memories, and it's one of the best races ever. Well, Ron, we got to work it out with Ronnie to get you back in that Blue Max at a Funny Car Chaos event. You know, he's got Napa on the side right now. We can, I got some, some deal has got to be worked out. We'll see. I'm, now I'm a Phil Alter guy, dude. I won the, <laughs> I finally won the March Meet, a race I, I attended as a kid. I was probably conceived in the parking lot of the March Meet. I've talked <laughs> to my mom. I think the math adds up. But I won the March meet right before COVID hit in a fuel altered, one of the legendary cars that I, you know, I grew up with Wild Willie Borsch and Mike Sullivan and the Pure Hell and Pure Heaven. And and I got my first March meet win in a nitro fuel altered, which is, you can't top that. So I might have to retire from that. Um, but either way, I'm you'll see me there. I won't miss that race. Well, you know who was conceived after a March meet win? Adam Sorokin, driver of the Champion Speed Shops. His dad, Mike, after he won the March meet, he was conceived after that. But I'll tell you what, Ron, I talked to Bobby Cottrell, the series champion in the South of Funny Car for the Heritage Series. He called you out. I asked him if there's any driver you want to line up against. He said the, the, the current series champion. So Bobby Cottrell, Bucky Austin, they called you out, man. They want to line up against you. Dude, Bucky Austin scares me. And I was behind his car at the Vegas race, you know, this last weekend. And they made their run with Bobby Cottrell, who I love. And as Bucky's walking away, he stopped and he turned. I said, hey, great run. He said, dude, your mom was just in our pit I love your mom. And he walked off. I was like, holy shit. I thought Bucky was going to like, you know, 
Bucky Austin had a reputation when I was younger and I thought, Oh my God. Well, it was cool to say he saw my mom. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> expecting that out of Bucky Austin, but, um, yeah, what a great series. What a, and Pat Austin, his son, Drew, Pat Austin is one of my favorite people, one of my heroes growing up. And I was on it when I became a, a licensed nitro driver, I want to emulate Pat Austin, him and Blaine Johnson. So it's so cool to have all them uh, involved. Ron, look, good to have you for a brief uh, moment of time on the 100th episode here of the Competition Plus Power Hour. Thank you for being a friend of the show. We'll let you catch that flight, and uh, we're going to roll on and get Mr. Steve Gibbs on. Yeah, man. Legendary. Steve Gibbs. He signed my nitro license, by the way. My first nitro top fuel license was signed by Steve Gibbs, and it blew up on the run. I shot everything off. And he gave me my license based on not how I did in the car, but how I did when something went wrong in the car. Let that be a lesson a lot of drivers out there. Cool story. Cool story. Enjoy the flight, Ron. All right. See you guys. Always good to have Ron Caps chime in. Chime in. Well, uh, I'm excited, uh, Darren. Uh, I know maybe the younger fan base, they might not recognize Steve Gibbs but we're talking about someone of legendary status in the world of drag racing. And yes, there is a legends uh, episode on Steve Gibbs on the competition plus uh, uh, YouTube page, a very early one, by the way, you can tell it was done about seven years ago. We got to get Bobby to hurry up, maybe do a part two uh, to it. Cause he's still very active in the world of drag racing. Yeah. And I got a, there's a, there's a certain question that I want to ask Steve Gibbs regarding a certain funny car body that he uh, had to oh. kind of was approved. Oh. So I want to, I want to ask him. Yes. I, I, think, I think you know where we're going with that. So I think, uh, I, think I might. I think I might. Yeah, I think I yeah. might. Well, folks, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are going to take a break real quick. This uh, break from Holly. Holly helps us out to bring you the Competition Plus Power Hour. And right after this word, we'll have Mr. Steve Gibbs on live. Classic car owners, make your headlights over twice as bright with Holly Retrobright LED headlights. A plug-in replacement for those dim halogen seal beams, Retrobright maintains that classic look and lasts six times longer. Stay safe and click the link below to learn more. Mr. Gibbs, welcome to the Competition Plus Power Hour. Thank you for the time. Thanks, guys. Appreciate being here. So, wow, competition director for so, so, so many years, but you're not out of the scene completely because this very weekend we've got a big program, a big deal happening in Southern California. Fill us in your involvement. What's happening this weekend? Well, we call it Nitro Revival. It's a, it's a combination of a, some racing. Uh, it's as much a car show uh, as a social event. Um, it's basically a get together to celebrate the history of the sport and the, the cars that we love back in that in the day. We're talking from late 50s, 60s, and 70s, which uh, us old guys refer to as the golden age, you know, basically front motor, top fuel cars, you know, the early funny cars. And the, so, you know, this is our fifth one. We started this in 2017, and it was just a, a, something to stay involved in the sport, you know. 82 years old now, but I'm not ready to drop out of it, you know, but I, you know, put my ears in 48 years with NHRA, 30 years as the competition director, uh, you know, conducting about 400 national events. So uh, it's in your blood, you know, it's hard to walk away from it. And it, it boils down to the relationship between the people. Uh, you, you get so uh, involved with the, you know, the personal lives of these folks that you live with them on the road and uh, unfortunately, we're, the age is catching up, and uh, so we need to take advantage of the time that we have to, uh, again, get together and celebrate, uh, you know, what we lived through and what we experienced. And I think it's just awesome what you guys are going to be putting on this week. And this will be my first Nitro Revival. Even being from L.A., I've never been, so I'm excited to get out there. For people who are showing up for the first time, can you just tell everybody, you know, what they can expect at Nitro Revival? And I know there's going to be a lot of legends on tap here this weekend. Can you name a few who are going to be uh, in attendance? Well, it's it's conducted at Irwindale Drag Strip. It's it's an eighth mile track. It's uh, not too far from the Pomona track. It's about twenty miles east of Los Angeles, right on the six hundred five freeway. And it's a it's a multi use facility. They've got a very nice oval track there, and they got the eighth mile drag strip. That it's one of the only really functioning racetrack in the Los Angeles area. Uh, you know, Pomona runs twice a year, but for the you know they 
regular folks that want to take their cars to the drag races, Irwindale is, you know, the choice they have short of going to, over the hill to Bakersfield. So it's um, it's a great facility, very clean, operated by a good track operator. And this will be our third event at Irwindale. Um, you know, the bit, one of the, the main features of our thing we, is the cackle cars. And these are restored, mostly top fuel cars, but fuel alders, historic cars. I'm talking, you know, Cool and Olson and uh, Tom Hoover's car. Tom just passed away. Uh, sad deal. We had the Smirnoff car, which if, if you follow those old cars, one of the most beautiful cars ever built, was going to appear this weekend. And the owner of the car, Joe Pasolacqua, passed away last night with a massive heart attack. So that, uh, you know, it, it kind of points out what we're, you know, we're facing here with the ages of these guys, although Joe wasn't that old. But um, it's a it's a recapturing of history. A lot of the fuel alders, you know, uh, Rich Glasgow's uh, car, Randy Bradford. Uh, and those cars will be running down the track, the rat trap with Ron Hope. So there will be some exhibition runs uh, going down the track. But uh, on Saturday night, we line up. Last year, we had 43 cars lined up on the racetrack, took the entire eighth mile and fired them up almost simultaneously. It's, uh, at any one time, there was about 12 to 15 cars running. And it's pretty awesome. So it's a, it's a, you know, kind of going to a museum with noise and smoke and power. And uh, on Sunday afternoon at one o'clock, we light off every car in the facility. So we <laughs> checking the Richter scale in the area, but uh, it's a, it's a different kind of a show. We call it, it's a social event though. And, uh, uh, but there's something to everyone. Plus uh, a big car show there, the uh, famous road Kings of uh, Burbank uh, club that Don Perdome and Tommy Ivo came out of their host club. And so we're going to have a, you know, the big car show corral there. we call it hot rod hangout. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. And on Saturday at two at one o'clock, we've got over 40 hall of fame members, for the, the biggest autograph session you'll see in drag racing. Um, 40 guys that are in the International Drag Racing Hall of Fame. You know, the Ed Iskandarians, the Linda Vons, the uh, McCulloughs, the uh, Perdome, Ivo, uh, Marvin Graham, Herman Peterson. I mean, you just go to on and on and on with the guys that are going to be there in this autograph session. So, uh, again, we're celebrating our history and, uh, and getting together and trying to have a good time. Well, I know you all will have a good time and thank you for what is being done and your part in it. We are losing uh, so many legends and so many pioneers so quickly in the uh, sport of drag racing, drag racing, long history. And I love to take the opportunity with someone such as yourself, Mr. Gibbs, and take some of the words we hear on social media and present them to someone such as yourself and ask you your opinion on the sport. We often hear things such as uh, drag racing is dying, NHRA is dead, uh, there's no more hope. When you hear things like that, that moder that people rattle off without much context, what is your reaction? What is your response? Because you've been in it a long time. Are we, are we, you know, are we gone by gone the good old days, or are we experiencing even right now the good old days? Where do you stand? It's a mixed bag, in my opinion. I mean, you've got high points and you've got some, you know, low points. You've got some concerns. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is uh, you know, the, the loss of some of the major tracks and the fact that there's probably not going to be many new ones built. That's a huge concern. And you've got some of the tracks that uh, may be in jeopardy. You know, I, I'm i really delighted that the Pomona situation, and I know there was a lot of rumors going around that weren't valid, because I've heard them before out there, but it, it's really good to see that they've got a good solid 10 year extension on the lease there and in and out coming in is huge. I can't tell you how big that is, especially in this area. Uh, one of the issues with Pomona is the fact that there's not a regular drag racing program going on to feed the national events when they come to town. And, um, uh, and that makes it tough to just, you know, show up for two events a year and not a bunch of activity going on at local racetracks, which used to be the issue, that situation with the the races at Pomona. You go to places like Bandemir, and what, they've got a continuing program, so the national events got something to feed it. In and out's going to, I think, fill that gap. That's a huge, I mean, uh, I can't tell you <laughs> over the years how many times I just uh, – 
drooled over the thought of having in and out um, as an event or title sponsor of some sort. They're just a magical company, and uh, um, I'm really tickled for the sport that this has uh, developed this way. Okay, so I, I'm I'm kind of geeking out right here. So I'm kind of figuring trying to figure out what direction I want to go in. So I'm gonna just go for it. I'm gonna just go for it. So let's go back to let's go back to 1986, 1987. Um, obviously, competition director, uh, the the Budweiser King, Kenny Bernstein, comes out with the uh the Batmobile, and he uh, he brings it to NHRA to to kind of say, hey, we got this deal, and we want to see if it's illegal. Uh, can you just talk about what you thought the first time you seen that body in real life, and how that all came about? <laughs> well, you know, racers constantly push the rules, you know, in, in all parts of the car. I mean, it's not just the body, it's in the, the engine, the supercharger development, wherever they can gain an advantage, they push. And Dale Armstrong was right at the head of that class. And the rules, the way they were written at the time, kind of depended a lot on the, I guess, the attitude of the body builders, the guys that molded these things. And there was kind of an effort to keep these things looking reasonably stock you know you can see cars sneaking away little so the, the rules there were no measurements as far as templates or all that stuff you just had you know body width uh, body height this and that and the car fit the rules as they were written you know in hindsight you look back and you think you know we probably let that thing get away from us when we probably could have put the brakes on it but you're dealing with the rules as they're written to tell a guy, you know, you can't do this because it, and it passes the rules and you're in an awkward spot. Um, funny, that car now looks pretty pretty tame you know, compared to where they're <laughs> gone from there. And another thing, you're dealing with these things increasing in performance all the time. And so you're looking for, you know, keeping these things planted on the ground. Some of these things were flying. You've seen pictures of Larry Reyes of, flying Roland's car at Pomona, the aerodynamics was getting a big problem because the power these guys were making and the clutch development and everything, it required more downforce and zoomier bodies. So, yeah, you look back on it and you think the car probably got by with, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Armstrong got one by on us, I'll say that, you know, but it, <laughs> it, we were dealing with the rules as they were written and, and that's that's where it went. But he wasn't the only one. There were some other guys that were pushing the rules too. Obviously, Kenny Bernstein, Bernstein, he got the attention with it. But there were some other bodies out there that had started to go down that same route. And uh, but you look at him now, that that Batmobile looks like almost like a stalker. So it's uh, <laughs> it's come a long way from from that point. Love it. Well, Darren, I'm thinking of another incident concerning a body. Though Bernstein is still a common denominator, Raymond Beetle blows off the top of his funny car and has got to take the top of another funny car off to uh, make it a non-convertible <laughs> machine. Uh, take us back down that road in history and you being involved in saying, okay, guys, you can go run the finals. It's okay with this hodgepodge, mishmashed, pieced together body. Well, you know, things are so much different. Um, at, that, at that time, you had to race the car you brought. I mean, you could not use a replacement car. Uh, you know, Cheryl Greer on the first, you know, he, he was the NHRA's first uh, champion when we went to a, you know, season-long points thing. Had a horrible fire at Ontario. And the guys were up basically all nice patching that car back together so he could make a round or two to get enough points to claim the championship. But that really added a lot of drama. It, uh, I mean, these guys are thrashing over there and crews from the other cars that, that got beat were over there patching that car together to get him up for the next round. Um, you couldn't keep doing that now because of the schedule these guys got. Well, you got to, you know, they're running these cars now with just a little over an hour between rounds. So in order to put on a good race, you, you bring a whole new car, up the trailer, and run it. I understand that. But at the same time, uh, it happened a lot of times where there was a big thrash in the pits to get the car ready because you had to you had to race that car. Uh, it wasn't a matter of just bringing another bullet out. Uh, and it just I think it took away some of the drama um, that we experienced at that time. And you see the little shows and you see, you know, cutting the roof off of Bernie's, you know, Bernstein's car and putting it on, you know, Raymond's car. Um, it, it made great, uh, great drama, you know, and, you know, Steve Evans and Dave McClellan will be right in the middle of that whole act. And, um, 
it was a different time, but I uh, I kind of missed some of that drama that I think the, the series uh, and the rules uh, provided for us. And I know we're kind of just going down memory lane a little bit. And so I just want to ask you this, you know, this question. As far as like a thousand foot racing, everybody says, oh, well, quarter mile racing is real racing and everything like that. And obviously the, the quarter mile thing is going back to quarter mile is kind of, you know, that's in the past now. But there was talks, I believe, you know, in the, in the mid 80s with Wally Parks and everything like that of going to a thousand feet. Um, can you just take us back to that time when Wally was, you know, you guys were really thinking about, you know, doing that and actually pulling that off? Well, you know, there's always the concern of these, some of these tracks are not going to get any longer. I mean, you, you're, you know, Pomona is not the longest place in the world. And uh, so we were dealing with issues even, you know, long before, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the things that happened that forced them to go to the thousand feet. And we did, we have a serious discussion about a thousand feet. Um, and at the time decided not to do that. And it stuck with a quarter mile. And well, there's traditionalists in the sport that if it's not a quarter mile, it's not drag racing. And I think it, more than a lot of people realize, you hear it all the time. Uh, but I don't think there's much choice the way these cars run. They're running almost 340 miles an hour, a thousand feet. And I know there was serious concerns with the tire companies not wanting these cars to go that any faster. And so it's hard to imagine what they would run now that a full quarter mile. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a, um, it's just evolution. You know, you have to adjust to the, you know, the, the times and, you know, these cars are so sophisticated now and the tires are so good and everything. And it's hard to imagine running a full quarter mile with the current cars. Um, but uh, yeah, there was, there was talk about uh, going to a thousand foot long before the, the decision was made following Scott Coletta incident. Uh, there was also talk about making Pomona a four wide track, uh, uh, years ago, we used to have to put the grandstands in for every race at Pomona. They'd put the grandstands in, take them down, put them in, take them down. And uh, when we finally got the approval to uh, put permanent grandstands in Pomona, we had a serious discussion about four wide uh, racing. And um, we talked ourselves out of it for a, a variety of reasons. But uh, uh, again, that's not a new concept either. Wow, I did not know that. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's some, that's some insider information right there. Yeah, really. <laughs> wow. A lot of this stuff we talk. Some of this stuff isn't new, you know. And uh, right. we had made little changes. You know, one of the changes we made that uh, wouldn't seem like much, but the speed trap used to be 132 foot long, and it set. You had the finish line, and it was 66 feet before the finish line and 66 feet after the finish line. That's how they measured the speed at the quarter mile. And we were concerned enough about the length of the tracks that that 66 feet, we decided to make the whole speed trap the 66 feet and the finish line was the finish line. You didn't have to drive it, what we call out the back door mm -hmm. to run that extra 66 feet to, you know, max out the speed. As it turned out, some of the speeds actually went up because the guys were clicking at the finish line and they were decelerating in that last 66 feet. So, it seemed a kind of a contradiction where, uh, you know, actually the speed stepped up because, uh, again, not many guys, there were a few guys like to drive it out the back door. And it, it turned out maybe a mile and a half, two mile an hour difference. It wasn't really a huge difference, but it saved us 66 feet of racetrack, which might be the difference between going in the sand trap or not. So, uh, yeah, you know, on some of these tracks, uh, you know, it was tough to extend them. Pomona is, a, you know, there's nowhere to go. Okay, you got a street right there. You got a great sand trap. The guys have dealt with it. Um, Columbus used to be real short until they were able to extend it across the road. Uh, uh, Maple Grove, same thing. You had to, and, and some tracks you can, you can't. I mean, you're locked, right? That's all you got. But um, it, it, the sport, you have to adjust and adapt and change and evolve and. Uh, and we did a lot of that, you know, on, on my watch, and it continues. Uh, you know, the you know the concerns about the sport. I love the sport. I love the you know the, the, all the elements of it. It's it's gotten so professional, though. That it's been, it's kind of removed from years ago. You used to have names that you guys are familiar with, like Warren and Colbert and Cool and Olson and guys that, but these are working class guys. You know, they could go out and put a uh, contending top fuel car on the racetrack and win championships and um, without the corporate sponsorship now or just individual wealth it's a very difficult challenge to to do that and you've seen it in the car counts uh, 
And, uh, I, you know, I hope that somewhere down the line that um, the cost, I, I, I don't know, it's always difficult to control how much money somebody spends. And if you're going to embrace that guy, you're going to have to spend the same amount of money. And there's just not that many people out there that can, can compete with the Torrances and the DeJorias and the Salinas. All great people, but they've got resources that very few other people have. And that's uh, so it's changed the sport a lot from that standpoint. Still spectacular. Um, I love going to the races and watching, hanging around these guys. And but there's concerns. Uh, Mr. Gibbs, decades as race director at so many national events, as you said earlier uh, on the show coming on, what, when you look at the modern day landscape, do you wish you had back in the day you were as a race director? And what do you see that you're like, <laughs> I'm so glad I don't have your job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I don't know. You know, it's, uh, you know, the impact of television is a tough one. You know, it's, it's put these guys on such a tight schedule and you look at ways of reducing the cost. Uh, one of the biggest things, again, the, the, what it takes to, race a 23 race series and um uh, and that's one of the concerns i have for the nostalgia guys they want to be they want to be involved in these national events but if they, you know you got to be careful what you ask for uh, because pretty soon you can't run this with weekend guys you need to hire you know full-time guys if you're going to race instead of six times a year eight times a year you're going to run 15 times a year and that boy that ups the ante you know and you're going to see the money come forward on that um, it's the, the television thing is a big impact. It's it's caused a reduction in the number of cars that uh, can compete at a national event. We used to have 120, 140, 150 super gas cars at our national event because we weren't really confined to that time. Now they have to limit that to I think like 64 cars because they can only run so many rounds and and meet the TV uh, requirements that they have. And so there's a for everything there's an upside there's sometimes a downside that uh, it, you don't really notice um but uh, but you have to adjust and adapt and uh, uh we you know we did a lot of that on <laughs> the times i was out there um the one piece of equipment i'd have died for was those tractors these guys have uh, <laughs> i mean we uh, uh we got by with uh I mean, it was uh, primitive compared to the equipment they have now. I really, uh, you know, applaud the safety safari guys. Uh, uh, when I first started this job with NHR, our our whole equipment that we had, going from national event to national event, was two great big blue wooden boxes with our timers in it. That was it. I mean, we had nothing else. Everything else that those races in had to come from the local track. Whatever safety equipment had. And there was very little track prep, but, uh, you know, from that, from the time when I left NHRA, we had the whole traveling uh, road show there with, uh, you know, tractors and jet dryers and, you know, track prep things that we developed over the years. And they're doing a lot of the things they're still doing uh, was stuff that pretty much came under my watch. And um, it's kind of good to see that some of that stuff was pretty good because they're still doing it. Not for sure, for sure. And so we've talked a lot about, um, you know, nostalgia racing and Legends Nitro Funny Cars on this show, and obviously with Nitro Revival encapsulating the history of the sport. And you actually just mentioned nitro, uh, nostalgia racing just a second ago. What is your thoughts on on the Heritage Series? You know, does you think do you think it capula, encapsulates the history like you wanted to with the, with the frontage and top field dragsters and the, and the nostalgia funny cars and the field alters and everything like that? Well, I, you know, they're they're trying. I mean, it, it, it's uh, uh, again. It's, it's uh, the tracks that you have to to run at, and it's it's a uh, you know there's a there's some really individual great nostalgia races. Uh, Ron Caps touched on earlier. Bakersfield, the March Meet, is a huge event. You know the guys up at Boise have got their night fire. It, it's a huge nostalgia event. Uh, but you know so many of these cars are localized. Uh, you got you got a few of them here and there, but it's kind of a West Coast thing. So to get those guys to make a lot of trips to faraway tracks is kind of tough. Um, and again, most of the guys that you think are they're still working guys. They're, they're trying to hold on jobs and, uh, and and get you know uh, out to these events at pretty remote locations. It's kind of tough. But uh, uh, I think there's a, a place for the nostalgia races. Uh, 
uh, it's going to take a lot of promotion. We'll have to see how this funding you know, funding card deal works out with uh, Bill Wyndham. I applaud the effort. I hope it, it, it bears some fruit. Um, but age is catching up with some of these guys, too. You know, the owners, you look at some of these nostalgia cars, they're guys that are, you know, a lot of them raced, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. And, you know, Jim Murphy and, you know, Mike, uh, Mike Fuller and uh, Bill Dunlap. And you see some of these guys out there. They've been around a long time. But uh, there's individual, uh, you know, I'd say uh, great, great events. I hope, I hope it can expand. Uh, it needs some good support, uh, you know, from NHR. And I think the sanctioning body could probably do more to promote this. But they got their hands full promoting, you know, the national events. Obviously, that's uh, their first priority. But, um, um, you know, it started out with the good guys. They had their series, and when they, they dropped out of it, uh, NHR stepped in with the Heritage Series to try to, you know, take the place so it didn't go away completely. But um, so much of it depends on a track to race at and unfortunately in california that's a that's that's an issue i mean you look at the bakersfield is a, a huge thing but um you know the next closest quarter mile track is sears point and i think they've reduced their activity though so it's uh, firebird you know going away uh, tucson i think would be a good location but uh, available racetracks that's a real concern that's a that's a huge concern of mine and um uh, I just hope that somewhere down the line, a couple of new trucks, you know, show up. Well, uh, Mr. Gibbs, uh, as, uh, oh, hang on, let me bring it back. Mr. Gibbs, as <laughs> Sean uh, Kohut says, thanks for all you are doing for the sport, Mr. Gibbs. Thank you for all that you have done. Yes. And I know we could uh, have you on for hours, but we don't want to hold you that long. Uh, we're going to let you go. Thank you for your time tonight. Before you do go, remind us the date, some time, some general information about this very weekend and event. Oh, taking place. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to sneak that in one last time here. Yeah, it's, 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 it's coming weekend. Uh, Friday is set up day. We call it our welcome day. And then Friday evening at 730, there's going to be a memorial uh, get together for Dave McClelland and Bill Schultz. Uh, the two families have gotten together and we're going to have a memorial service there at the track for, for Dave and Bill Friday night. Um, and on Saturday, that's the big day. And it, it, we open at six in the morning for everybody to get in. And it's again, a combination of the cackle cars, the exhibition cars, the street rods, and you know, all the elements of Nitro Revival. And, and once again, on Sunday. So it's again, Saturday, Sunday, November 5th and 6th, Irwindale Drag Strip, um, located, uh, you know, about 20 miles east of Los Angeles, and uh, tickets will be on sale at the gate, and uh, we're looking forward to, you know, all these cars and all these folks out there. Uh, Ed Iskandarian, he'll be there, 101 years old, signing autographs. Uh, he's already wanted to know the date for next year so he can get it on his calendar. And he does, nice. uh, 101 years old, but he doesn't want to miss the, you know, <laughs> 2023. So I hope to see you guys out there. I mean, it's a, it's a unique event. It's not like any other drag race you've been to. Um, I'll make some smoke, make some noise, uh, have some laughs. Uh, it's, 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 you know, really, we're, we're proud of what we put together, my daughter and I. It's a father-daughter operation, and we do it once a year, so we've got to retrain ourselves uh, each time to when we get close to the event. But it's going to be good. Weather looks great. There you go. Mr. Go. Gibbs, thank you for the information. Thank you for your time. We look forward to having you again. Appreciate it. Yeah, anytime you guys want to chew the fat about some of this old stuff, <laughs> you know, it's uh, put a lot of years in, and uh, it was a great ride. I mean, I, I was fortunate to work for Wally Parks for so many years. I mean, and then you're really talking about vintage NHRA when you're talking about Wally and, and that uh, in that era, and I was really proud to be a part of it. And uh, and fortunate, thankful. When, when we get you back on, uh, I think the statute of limita limitations is up. We'll talk about the nitrous deal with the, with the pro stock guys. Just throwing it out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wish I knew more about that, to be honest with you. you know, but, 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 uh, I didn't know everything about everything, but <laughs> gotcha, sometimes gotcha. you got to raise your eyebrow and wonder. You know? Anyway, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Get your CompetitionPlus.com apparel today. Whether it's our nitro-burning funny car design or the vibrant door slammer design, we have the swag to show you are always in the know. Get yourself a hat, too. And we know not everyone enjoys wearing a mask, but if you must wear one, at least wear a good-looking one. Check out the new CompetitionPlusApparel.com for the latest from the place where you have trusted for your news on the Internet for over two decades. Well, you might not need a mask no more, but there's still some cool swag at competitionplusapparel.com. Go check it out. Darren, man, great to have you along tonight. What a great show man. from Erica, Bill, Ron, and Steve Gibbs, uh, Mr. Gibbs himself. What a cool show for the 100th episode this has been. We've had a little bit of everything. Modern, nostalgia, future, man. past, right now, everything. Man, what a way to do the 100th episode of the Competition Plus Power Hour. You, What you and Sam have built over this past two years or so, I mean, I applaud you guys. And just, I'm just happy to be able to fill in um, every now and then. But like you said, what a great show. Eric Enders, Ron Caps, Bill Windham, Steve Gibbs. I mean, I got to thank Bobby Bennett just for the opportunity. This was an awesome show. For sure. I definitely agree. Thank you, Bobby Bennett. And uh, thank you, Sam, as well. Uh, we'll yeah. look forward to having you back on next week. But Darren, thank you for the hard work you're putting in right here when you come on the show on your platform, American Hot Rod Entertainment. And you're doing a lot of great work at as the uh, assistant senior editor or whatever your title is. I'll get it right eventually with competitionplus.com. <laughs> you're doing a lot of great work, whether it's the Pro Mod Notebook at the U.S. Nationals or Funny Car Chaos Recaps or Notebooks even at the California Hot Rod Reunion. What are you looking forward to with this uh, revival meeting going on this weekend? Oh, man, just the sensory overload. All the cool front engine top field dragsters is going to be on board. I know a lot of the Nostalgia Series guys are going to be there. Just just taking it all in. You know, I, like I said, I've never been. Um Checking it out this weekend. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And uh, if you're in the Southern California area, Southern California area, come out and check it out. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And my birthday is November 8th. So this is a great birthday present. I got I got Vegas, I got Bakersfield, Vegas, Nitro Revival, and then the World Finals all packed around my birthday. I mean, great time to be a drag racing fan with your birthday in November. But uh I just want to just um mention one thing real quick. Uh Mr. Gibbs mentioned, you know, all it, how concerning it is of all the, the tracks in Southern California that's kind of gone away. Yes. Um I think there has been talks, and, and I don't know for sure. But I think Irwindale has been sold. I'm not quite, I'm not 100%. Don't quote me on that. But I think that's another track that might be going away soon. I, that's what I've heard. I don't know. But um, that's very concerning, too, because that literally is outside of Pomona. That With Fontana gone, that is the only track in Southern California that still exists outside of Pomona. So, um, yeah, like Mr. Gibbs said, that, that is very concerning right there. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to say, what else to say about it. It is, because Bakersfield is not quite L.A., you got to yeah. go up a highway, over over a range, boom. You know, you 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 are to uh, the streets of Bakersfield and Famoso Dragway. Yeah, and it is sad that the growth is so great, and the stance is what it is concerning environment and political matters. Yeah, that we are losing an area that is the very roots of hot rodding, drag racing, and car culture. The birthplace of drag racing. Honestly. Yeah. In so many ways. I mean, I get it. You can go back further into history and find drag racing yeah. on other instances. Yeah. You can. You actually can. You can go way back and find forms of drag racing. And it's obviously tied into uh, the timing on whether it's the beaches of Daytona or the salt flats or the flatbeds, whatever it might be. But what we understand as drag racing, it goes back to hot rodding in Southern California and, and you yeah. know, street light to street light or stop sign to stop sign. And it is slowly through growth. And again, the political and environmental climate has been pushed out. And you're about to have very possibly the last bulwark to be that track. Thank God now to be sponsored for at least 10 years, it seems, yeah. by in and out and continue drag racing there yeah. at the Fairplex. No, for sure. And, and that's one of the questions I want to ask Steve Gibbs is if he knew any information on Irwindale and like if it is being sold, is there any, you know, of, of keeping on the event any other any other place, you know, because, um, yeah, like that's what I say. I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't I don't know. That's what I've just what I've read. I've heard. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I guess we'll see in the in the coming future. It, it, it is fascinating. But. We are seeing other areas grow 
to be hotbeds. For example, Indianapolis was not always a hotbed for drag racing. Yes, I understand that the U.S. Nationals have been held there for decades, but it's it it within the last 20, 25 years, it's become this place where all these teams gravitate to and work out of and function out of. So there could be more for the Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park with drag racing and other forms of motorsports. You see almost a growing hub for pro stock in the Mooresville, North Carolina yeah. area, uh, mm-hmm. USA, Race City, USA, and all that it has for NASCAR country and beyond the world of motorsports. So you have other places taking and allowing roots to be put down. But yeah, it is sad to see SoCal move away from what it has been for so long. It looks like that that, that museum on Fairplex grounds and that drag strip are going to be the final flag waving for drag racing possibly in the near future. And that is sad, but that mean drag racing's dying. Oh, Does not mean no, it's, it's all. in bad not shape? All. I mean, I've heard people say that Las Vegas didn't have a crowd, but you were there. How was the crowd? <laughs> the crowd was huge, man. Saturday and Sunday, the people in Las Vegas came out to support. It, it was a big crowd, and the crowd pops. It's not just about having a crowd. It's about the crowd getting into it. And I'll tell you what. When Clay Milliken took out Justin Ashley first round, crowd pop. When Brittany Force won the race, crowd pop. When Eric Anders won the championship, crowd pop. When Madison Payne took down Tony Stewart in the final round, gasp in the air so it's like they came, they showed their emotion so they came out to play very cool good to hear that the crowd was that engaged they know what's going on then and hey who do you think had the best costume halloween theme out there obviously bo butner and his crew always goes all out they had the lightning mcqueen look but who else of the groups within nhra you think had the best get up for halloween Courtney Anders. I tell you, Courtney, she stole it with that uh, Shirley Modowney uh, look. Anders. She rocked it and looked great and could have, yeah, looked like a young Shirley. That was, and she kept the helmet like the whole time yeah. <laughs> underneath. It was a part of the costume. That was so cool. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yes, yes. If there was an award for best costume, and maybe there is, and I don't know about it, yes, it should go to Courtney Anders. I agree completely. Yeah, I just want to give a quick shout out, though, to Madison Payne, obviously um, the daughter of Shelly Payne and, and Jay Payne, uh, Shelly Anderson, former top field driver, Jay Payne, former top alcohol, top, top, top alcohol, funny car, dragster driver and pro mod driver, getting her first current national event win, defeating three time Cup Series champion, current Nitro owner, Tony Stewart in the final round by two ten thousandths of a second. Yes. Congratulations to Madison Payne on that big win. One yes. of the greatest top alcohol dragster finals ever. That was badass, yo. I agree. And. By the way, if you're out there, Madison Payne, if you know Madison Payne, I would love to have her on my show Thursday yeah. night. Been trying to figure out how to get a hold of her. I've asked Edelin, I've asked Bobby. I'd love to have her on my show Thursday night and talk to her about her first national event win on such a big stage. Yes, I mean it, big stage, Las mm-hmm. Vegas. But all the attention brought to Top Alcohol Dragster because of Tony Stewart. And might I yeah. say, and it deserved it because it is Tony Stewart. Yeah. And top alcohol des- dragster does deserve more exposure, period. So I'm glad oh, it happened. I'm glad yeah. it was on the national event in the way that it was. But so cool to see who she is for her name to get out there in this way. Yes, yes. Before all of these other people in motorsports, and they're like, a girl? I, I guarantee people are like, <laughs> a girl? And we're like, duh. <laughs> I, I mean just imagine you're I, I think she's 20 21 years old you're you're in a final so you just you just lost in the final round at the texas motorplex and stampede of speed right you come back make it to the final round again at las vegas and you got to take on tony stewart all the the hype and all the hoopla and all the talk around tony stewart making his debut you have to face him in the final round and she said after the win she was like none of the pressure was on me all the pressure was on tony all i had to do was just go out there and and get the job done and she did that i mean yep. um 061 reaction time to tony stewart's 065 I mean, Look, Tony, two... Tony did a great job of driving. And yes. for people not looking regularly into drag racing, they might not understand. Tony was in one of the top rides that is out there yeah. in top alcohol dragster. That McPhillips ride, if you look at their record, there's been national events already this year, and there's been regional races won as well. They get the job done regularly. Yeah. 
not that just anybody can hop in and win, but if you hop in in that car, your chances of winning definitely go up. You know, Will Smith, he hops in that ride, he's probably going to win a race. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of the cars out there like that. It's not just Randy Meyer racing. You've got Randy Meyer racing. You've got the Samsels. You've got the McPhillips. And mm -hmm. you've got, you know, even the Paynes with their ride. There are a lot of top dragster uh, dragsters out there in top alcohol dragster. And we saw it that this past weekend because we had the quickest field for yeah. top alcohol dragster ever. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's funny. Um, Drag Race Central just put in the comments. If I had a dollar for every fan who thought top alcohol was top field, I'd, I'd be a millionaire by now. And so it's funny that he says that because I listened to the Door Bumper Clear podcast with uh, with all the spotters, Brett Griffin and uh, TJ Majors and all that. And when they talked about Tony Stewart making his debut, they said top field. And I'm just screaming. I'm like, no, it's top alcohol. It's top alcohol. It's not top field. So it's funny that he mentioned that. But for Tony Stewart, I mean, like you said, did a great job of driving all weekend long. And he faced some tough competition. You think about yes. James Stevens, Taylor Vedder, Chris Dimke. I mean, Chris Dimke's one of the baddest dudes out there and went out there, took him out, and made it to the final round. So uh, just even though he was in a top ride, you still got to get the job done behind the wheel. And he did that. So um, I'm looking for, and I think by him losing by two ten thousand two ten thousandths of a second is only going to make him more hungrier of like, hey, I want to go out there and get this win now. And so he's, I think we'll see Tony Stewart back very soon. I expect that we are going to see him back very soon. I expect him to be in a top field ride also, maybe next year, depending on how it goes for him in top alcohol dragster. Do I expect from Tony a full pool and running for a championship? Oh, no. I don't think he's there in any motorsport right now. He's in a place in his life where if he wants to try it, I think he wants to go try it. And I think he wants to go experience it. I don't yeah. think he wants to run for championships. I think he does want to run for trophies. And I, I imagine he would want to add the U.S. Nationals to his mantle and mm -hmm. have that Wally. But yeah. I am glad to some extent for drag racing that he didn't come out and just win the first time <laughs> out. You know, I have said, and you can find on this show, that I'm so glad we have Tony, but I don't want him to come out and be successful right away. But in saying that, something, since I have said those things, Tony, thank you for the respect that you have shown drag racing. He oh, has shown sure. yeah. so much respect, and he has said repeatedly, this is hard. This is challenging. This is a man who has done, you know, like 220 plus at Indianapolis. This is a man who has won IndyCar uh, championships. This is a man who has been in the draft and duked it out on short tracks and gone left and right on road courses as a NASCAR champion. This is a man that is well accomplished in motorsports. And he's saying this is hard. It is yeah. not easy. He's a man that's calling Travis Pastrana out of nowhere saying, dude, you don't know what you don't know. And <laughs> yeah. you need to realize what you're about to do. And it is tough. So I love the respect that he yeah. has shown to the sport. And also the enthusiasm. You caught it. I caught it. I think everybody out there caught it. The slight little knock, some yes. shade. Some, yes. Some, you know, throw, you know, getting some stuff off the shoulder of this is a whole lot more fun than anything's got fenders on it. <laughs> Dude, I was uh I was walking out of the media center when he said it. I could just hear it like as I was closing the door to go outside. And man, when he said that, like the crowd just lit up. It was so funny. The media center lit up, the crowd outside lit up. I mean, and it's just I did. I was in the. I was in his lounge Saturday before qualifying. He did like a little press conference and just, just how at ease he was, at peace, and just like just the sense of humor, how funny he was. Like you just tell he's just having so much fun. The passion is there. Like you said, he has the respect for it. And um, and this isn't anything new. If you remember when 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 Tony Stewart was sponsored by U.S. Army, uh, he was he was on, he was on a starting line at the U.S. Nationals. Um, with Tony when Tony Schumacher was winning when was winning Indy when uh when Antron Brown beat Dale, Dale Worsham in the final round of Indy in 2011. Tony Stewart was on a starting line. He's been around us for a long time. Tony Stewart is not new to drag racing. No, he is not. He is not. And it is good to see the exposures the sport is getting. I think it's definitely deserved. I feel like NHRA drag racing, drag racing overall is on a upward trajectory from yeah. Funny Car Chaos to Radial to No Prep Kings to NHRA drag racing on many different levels. It seems like it is all moving forward. I think motorsports in general is. Yeah. Uh, sure, there are still things to figure out. Pomona is no longer one of them. We seem to be good there for a while, and we definitely have a lot of up-and-coming stars. Like we mentioned, people being licensed this 
past Monday after the national event. I think things are good for drag racing. Darren, look, as we get toward the end of the show, we get ready to close it out. What are some content pieces coming up for American Hot Rod Entertainment? Uh, can we expect a, a national event review after the finals, maybe with some in and out starring on, yes. some, on you know? So, Lee, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. If you come to Pomona or not, I need you on that post-race show, man, the end of season. we got to do it. I, I can you. do it. I can do it, man. We can do it. I, I, I want to be at Pomona, but, you know, you know, and I'm not going to air everything, but there are some yeah. family things yeah. at yeah. home I've yeah. certainly got to take care of and make sure mm -hmm. are right. But if I can get out there to that last race, definitely want to be there at that last race. I uh, would love to see Justin win his first championship and – would uh, love to see uh, Robert uh, pulling for – man, I like I really like Robert, and I really like Ron. Ron Robert's such a cool dude. Ron's yeah. such a cool – nothing against Matt. Nothing against Matt. He is too. Yeah. But, like, I feel like when it's – right now at least. And, look, I'm not trying to take anything away from John Force. John Force is the GOAT. He is. Yeah. He is the greatest of all time. Possibly drag racing period and definitely funny car. But, but we uh, – I think we can all agree that it is – uh, it's dusk on his career, okay? Mm -hmm. But I think it's maybe just a little bit past noon. It's kind of the brightest part of the day when it comes to Robert Height and Ron Katz mm -hmm. and them duking it out. And I think Funny Car, with them going to the final round for a championship, something like that, that is the best story right now for the sport. No, for sure. And so here's, like we said, this, for Hagen and Caps. The key and Capsi has even said it himself. They need to get this thing under sixty points going into eliminations, because if if that doesn't happen, all Robert ha Robert 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 Hay has to do is advance to the second round, the semis, and he locks him out. Actually, second round. If he keeps it over 60, 61, all he has to do is advance to this. Wait, hold on. Advance to the semifinals and he wins it. Yes, I'm points and I'm getting confused. So the key for Caps and Hagen is to get this thing under sixty points. Two thousand nineteen. Height, Beckman, Hagen. Height had two rounds over over Beckman and Hagen. Height raced Hagen in the semifinals. Beckman already advances to the final round. If Hagen would have won that round, it would have been Hagen and Beckman in the final round for the championship. But Height stepped up, was clutched, beat Hagen, and clinched the championship. We can see right. that very same scenario here this weekend if Caps and Hagen can get that thing under sixty points. This you thing is not over. This thing is not over it's not whatsoever. Over. It's not over. You very well can see that very same scenario. And who did he? Who did Robert have in round one? Uh, th this guy behind me that I have all over my background right now. You see, you got the John Force, the John yeah. Force, the John, yeah. all the John. Yeah, race John uh -huh. Force. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you race John and, Force. And who was in the stands next to you that we had just met and said, you know what, three hundred foot mark, watch out, buddy. Uh, so that was the day we met. I was like, hey, are you are you Monday morning racer? He goes, yeah, I'm Monday morning racer. I was like, I love your show. And uh, yeah, so we predicted John would smoke the tires at three hundred feet, and John smoked the tires at three hundred feet. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine that. No, John Force Slander on this show. <laughs> hey, John is great. John yes. is great. He's a cool yes. dude for sure. Robert is too. And look, <laughs> Robert, if you're listening, whoever feels the fuel tank, if you win the championship or in the <laughs> final round, fill it all the way up and complete the full track burnout and make a run. Come on. <laughs> and tell Jimmy Proc next time you're going to do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. Darren, look, man, anything else? Uh, we we are man. we can expect that national uh, event and review from your channel. Uh, again, if you're out there and you know how to get a hold of Madison Payne, would love to have her on my show Thursday night between the slicks and talk to her about her win. And we'll be talking about all the other news in the world of drag racing. I think that's about it, man. Anything else? Yeah, man. So obviously my 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 load of as far as competition plus is going to pick up very soon. So um, if you guys are all watching, the post race show has just been amazing this year. I mean, all the viewers who've come on the live show, if we can, let's get a hundred live viewers for this final show of the season. This is the last show of the year. Let's get a hundred live viewers. That's my goal. I I've been up to, I think 80 or so, so far this year, let's get it to hundred. So um, the live show will be, like you said, on, on your Facebook page and my YouTube channel, America Hot Rod Entertainment, Monday Morning Racers. So like I said, my love for competition plus picking up um, and just for, for this last show, a hundred live viewers would just make my season. So make my year. So let's get it done. All right. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Look, I just looked at YouTube. It says that 
50 are watching right now, and I only have 27 likes. Was this not a good show? Hit this that like show. button on the way out. Hit that like button on Facebook. Hit that share button. Help us out. Come right back here on Tuesday night. That is Darren Williams Jr., American Hot Rod Entertainment, the assistant senior editor for Competition Plus. I'm the Monday morning racer, Lee Craft. He was filling in for Slamming Sam. We will see you all next week. Love, peace, and chicken grease. <laughs>